Hi, this is Jillian with another episode of Online Marketing Easy Peasy, because marketing your online business should be easy. This week, we're going to talk about using LinkedIn and how to build those connections with people on LinkedIn. Now, a mistake that a lot of us do is we go ahead and we connect with a lot of people and then crickets. We don't do anything. We just build up having lots and lots of contacts, but we don't really know how to work those contacts. And the last thing in the world you ever want to do is just start sending buy my stuff to people on LinkedIn, because that's just the quickest way that people will unconnect with you. With that all being said, what is the easiest way that you can connect and nurture and have relationships with people on LinkedIn? So eventually your connections might become customers. I'm going to show you a couple of tips today that I use that I recommend and hopefully these will work for you. So the first thing that you want to do is after you perhaps have been to a conference and you've got a lot of new contacts on LinkedIn and you've connected with people, the question is what's the first way you should contact with them? So the first thing that I suggest is you go through your most recent connections. You want to go up here to where it says my network. And then you're going to go over here where it says manage my network and you're going to click on connections. And then when you get there, you'll see that you have the option of sorting your connections by first name, last name, or recently added. I would suggest you go with the recently added and it would be so nice if you could tag people that you met them at a particular event, but you don't have that on the free version of LinkedIn. So you just going to have to work with who you have recently added. And as you go through, you can see that here's somebody that I connected with a day ago, a week ago, three weeks ago, three weeks ago, and on and on it goes. And so I could go through here. And if I've been to an event recently, probably the majority of people that I would connect it with were at that event. And so I would use that as my starting point. If I wanted to reach out to this person right here, before I, I could just click and message him and talk. And in actuality, I connected with him a while ago and it said in, in follow-up to attending WordCamp Las Vegas this past weekend, I'm looking forward uh, to working with other people in the WordPress community. So that is how I approached him in the first place in order to connect. He's connected with me. So if I wanna keep the relationship going, I can kind of look here and I could just send him a note off the top of my head. But here's something that I give you as a tip. Go to somebody's profile. So if I went to his profile and if I ever wanna get rid of this new message box, just clicking it makes it tidy away. That took me the longest time to figure out. So that's just kind of a nice tip itself. So I could go through and I could get some information by looking at his profile. So we see that, for instance, he is in Las Vegas. So we are in related cities. We could, I could look through his uh, highlights about him. I could read through his about section and learn a little bit. I could learn through his experience. Where, what are the different pl places he's worked for? Oh, he's worked for Zappos. I've done a Zappos tour. So that might be something that we could talk about that I could use as a, a way of approaching him. I could look at where he went to school and I see that he went to the Royal Military College of Canada. Well, that's interesting because I'm Canadian. So now we have some common ground. I can look through and I see that he went to uh, the Sir John A. Macdonald High School in Canada. So again, another thing that we have in common. I can look at somebody's volunteer experience because then that gives me some insight as what they like to do on their time off. I can see who's endorsed them, what kind of things he's been endorsed for, what people have recommended him for, what are his accomplishments, what are his languages, he speaks French. Well, that's understandable because he's from Canada. He's obviously a science fiction writer, so that's kind of interesting because I like to write too. So again, another commonality. I can go through and if he has done any, um, he hasn't, but if I went through and if he had done any blog posts or videos, I could go in and have a look at the videos. I can check to see if he has a website and go on his website and learn a little bit about him. And that is much more effective than just trying to get him to buy my stuff because 
Maybe he is not a potential customer for me. Maybe he is just a person who I could have a relationship with on LinkedIn and we have like-minded interests and I could build a friendship with him. Not everybody is going to buy from you. So you need to look at people in many different lights. If I wanted to message him, so then at this point I would just click message and it should pop up and show the message. Oh, here we go. And I would write a message to him right in here inside of LinkedIn. And LinkedIn's trying to make things cute so that you can add in GIFs and little happy faces and things like that. So that's good to know. And just as a tip, even though I'll just show you there for a second, if I click on new message, even though it allows me to um, add an attachment, I would always ask someone for permission before you send them the attachment because you just never want to be accused of spamming people. So if you have a article that you'd like to send somebody as an attachment, maybe you want to send them your price list, something like that, always ask them first. It's just a quick question of, you know, in follow up to when we were talking at the conference, you were interested in my fees. Would it be OK if I sent you a copy of my fees? is an attachment ask them first and then send it and then you'll have a much better response so another thing you want to do is you want to look through your messages and see if there's maybe some messaging that you have not paid attention to because not everybody is getting their linkedin messages set up to be automatically in their email i know i don't i particularly use the linkedin messaging and don't have it go through my email. What I need to do is I have to kind of make some time during the week to come through here and see, is there some messages that I haven't taken care of? LinkedIn's very good about telling you a, a message that's sponsored. So somebody's paid to have this message sent to me. So um, you know, for the most part, to be honest with you, if I see a sponsored message, I usually ignore it. So just to let you know where your advertising dollars go. And we can see that if it says you, I've written something and they're responding back. So that's um, a good thing to know. If we go through here, anything that's in bold is something that I have not read yet. So if I wanted to look through here, I'm actually pretty good about keeping on top of my message. I don't think I actually have any messages except for the one that was a sponsored message. But if I wanted to respond to anybody, so I wanted to respond, I just go in here and I would write my message and then I would hit send. So it's that easy to respond to somebody in messaging. Okay, another place that you want to nurture your relationships with people on LinkedIn is going through your news feed. And so in order to do that, most of the time when you come into LinkedIn, you're on the home screen and this is where you're going to see your new posts. So when you come into LinkedIn, if you click on new posts, it'll show you sort of like refreshes it for you and you have the option of choosing, so let's actually go here, of sorting your newsfeed. You can sort it by the top or the recent. And um, I like to sort mine by the recent because then I see the things that are particularly uh, the most recent things, the things that people have posted um, most recently. So this was posted, let's see, two minutes ago. Um, Somebody liked this probably very quickly, uh, 13 minutes ago. So you see the most recent things coming through. So I just prefer, that's what I like to do. So you can play around with this and just see if you would rather have it by top or recent and just see which one works for you. And as you're going through, you'll always see this is a person and it will say first or second or third. First means somebody I am directly connected with. So this is somebody that I am connected with. And if I go down through the newsfeed, most of the time I'm seeing the stuff that's my first connections, unless it's somebody that I'm following. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a couple minutes. And so if you read something and something resonates for you, this is a really great way to connect with people is to make a comment. So if I was to read this post and just say that, um, I, I enjoy reading about this. I could click here and I could add a comment and that way my connection would see that comment. I can also just, you know, do a like or, you know, uh, 
this is curious, insightful, I love it, celebrate, like, so I can also, you know, give it a cute little emoji, or I could comment, or I can, if I really like something, I might want to share it with everybody who I'm connected with. And so that's a way to, again, nurture relationships, because whoever wrote the original post is going to know that you've shared it with other people. Again, this is another way that you can reach out and, and be noticed by people. And I found that a lot of times that uh, when I comment on someone's post, they'll come back and comment um, to the comment. So here's an example, Gemma Stowe, she had a post, somebody content, uh, commented, and then Gemma commented on the comment. And it's giving her post more activity, but she's also, you know, you do that enough times, people will get to know. And I've had a lot of people that if I've commented on a post um, that they maybe shared from someone else, that I'm not connected to. If I've made a, a, a comment on that post, a lot of times people will come back and want to connect with me. So again, it's just a way of being more visible on LinkedIn. Another way to connect with people and network on LinkedIn is to follow particular hashtags. And so right now, if, you, if we scroll down here, you can see these are, sometimes it's goofy and doesn't actually show you which hashtags I'm following, because I'm actually following quite a few, but for some reason they're not showing up today. So I am following all sorts of different hashtags that have something to do with areas that I'm particularly interested in. For instance, like video marketing, online marketing, email marketing, if it has something to do with marketing, it's something that I'm interested in. And a reason why you would wanna follow a particular hashtag is, it might be somebody is post, posting something outside of your LinkedIn connections. And if I know, if I'm not following that hashtag, I won't see that post because I'm only going to see the posts of people that I'm connected with. If I wanted to, for instance, uh, recently, um, my sister Janet was at the uh, Global Entrepreneurship Week. So it was GEWK. There it is, G-E-W-K-C. -G -G -E so that was the hashtag. So if I click on, if I search for that hashtag, we see that there was 25 people following it. Not huge, but it, it is something. And if we go through, we can see here's a post that Janet did, and she did quite a few posts that she used the G-E-W-K-C. But she could go through here and see if other people used the GEWKC and they did. And so for instance, Mark Robinson, if he was at the GEWKC, she might want to go ahead and use this opportunity to connect with Mark if she hasn't already done so, because they have, again, a like interest. So again, it's a way of finding people and finding other connections that are interested in what you're interested. For instance, I'm very interested in Toastmasters. If I did hashtag Toastmasters and I search for that hashtag and I can see, wow, 2,500 people follow that hashtag. So I have the option to follow it myself or I could just browse through here and I could get tips of uh, different different things that people have published that I might want to read about. And if I want to comment again, I just click here and I comment again. It's a way of getting to new connections and having being more visible on LinkedIn. And of course, the last thing for LinkedIn, I want to post regularly. You don't want to get on LinkedIn and be this ghost town that you've never come in, you've never posted anything. I like people to be able to come to my profile and see that I have different articles. I have different articles that I've shared. So here's my activity. So I have followers and I have people that have read my articles that uh, have either maybe shared them, given a comment, whatever. And I can go through and I can see all of my activity. This is posts that I have commented on. I can see articles. I can see posts. I can see documents. I don't think I actually have done any documents. But again, this allows people to come to my profile and learn a little bit about me and learn about what I can do for their business. Again, you don't want to get on LinkedIn and be a ghost town and just, you know, 
never do anything. You want to put content out there. You don't have to do a ton of content. Even if you just did an occasional post, you did a uh, blog article once in a while, LinkedIn video is a great way to be visible because that actually goes beyond your first level connections. I believe video goes to your first, second, and third level connections. So again, great way to get visibility. So I hope these tips were helpful today on how you can use LinkedIn and different things that you can be doing with your LinkedIn connections. If you like this video, please give us the thumbs up and send us a comment and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for another edition of Online Marketing Easy Peasy.